Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news of this morning, triple killing breaks a murder-free streaks in St. James. A more than one-month murder-free streak in St. James was broken Tuesday afternoon when three men were killed on King Street in downtown Montego Bay. We stand up over three dead bodies on the ground right now, a trusted police source told the news shortly after 7 p.m. All of them have multiple gunshot wounds, the sources said. The sign that all was not well in the area, which is close to the volatile Canterbury community, came when social media groups began making posts urging taxi operators not to use that route because shots were being fired. St. James has seen a lull in violent crimes in recent months. However, with 60 murders since the start of the year, St. James is currently the nation's most murderous parish. No update from police on proof of shooting of Integrity Commission Director Chairman of the Integrity Commission, retired Justice Seymour Panton, says that the director of the IC, who was shot and robbed in a New Kingston car park in September 2023, is yet to receive an update from the police on its investigation. The IC chairman said that the anti-corruption body has also not received an update from the police on its probe into the incident. In the IC's 2023 annual report, which was tabled in Parliament Tuesday afternoon, Panton noted that a serious criminal act was committed in the vicinity of the commission, that a crime remains unsolved. I imagine that investigations are taking place, said Panton, who noted that the police ought to be very concerned that this happened in the New Kingston Business District, where there are no zinc fences, no bushes, and very few side roads, yet the perpetrator was able to disappear without a trace in the clear morning light. Following the shooting last September, Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbailey said he had assigned a senior investigator from the Criminal Investigation Branch to probe the incident. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who condemned the incident, described the act of violence as a shocking and appalling. The government has full confidence in the law enforcement agency's ability to swiftly investigate this matter and bring those responsible to justice. We urge the public to cooperate with the authorities in their efforts to ensure a thorough and a transparent investigation, the Prime Minister said at the time. Ryan Evans, a director at IC, was shot in the car park near the agency's offices on September 21, 2023, after men on a motorcycle accosted him and stole his briefcase. Evans is the Director of Corruption Prevention, Stakeholder Engagement and Anti-Corruption Strategy at the IC. Illicit 6 down to 2, but the three legislators been monitored for giving fake info. While the number of parliamentarians being investigated for illicit enrichment has been reduced from 6 to 2, the Integrity Commission has reported that three lawmakers are currently being probed for providing false information to the anti-corruption body. Four public officials are also being probed for providing false information to the Commission. At the same time, the number of public officials under investigation for illicit enrichment has decreased from 28 to 4. In its annual report last year, the IC reported that six parliamentarians were being probed for illicit enrichment. However, in its 2023 annual report, which was tabled yesterday in Parliament, the Commission indicated that the number has fallen to two. Providing false information to the IC is a criminal offence. Section 43 of the legislation states that a person who knowingly makes a false statement in a statutory declaration or an inquiry being conducted by the Director of Investigation could face a fine not exceeding $2 million or a term of imprisonment not exceeding two years upon conviction. In his remarks, IC Chairman Retired Justice Seymour Panton pointed out that the law provides that any person may make a complaint orally or in writing, give information, or notify the IC about a matter which involves or may involve an act of corruption or non-compliance with the act. He explained that when a person approaches the Commission in this way, the Director of Information and the Complaint is compelled to record the complaint or information 
and they submit it to the appropriate director of the Commission for Action. Panton said that the law also provides that the IC's annual report must contain a general description of the matters that were referred to the Commission and a general description of the matters being investigated. The Commission has no control over the complaints and allegations it receives. It must, however, investigate them and make a note of the fact of the receipt and the investigation in the annual report. That is what the legislation passed by Parliament requires, he said. According to Panton, the Jamaica Constabulary Force receives numerous complaints and allegations of various crimes that, when investigated, are found to be without merit. So does the Integrity Commission, which has no control over speculations, rumors, or mischief-making in the society, he added. The IC also reported that one parliamentarian and two public officials were prosecuted for failure to honor discharge liability under Section 43.3 of the Integrity Commission Act. At the same time, three parliamentarians and 55 public officials have been discharged of liability by paying the fixed penalty and submitting the requested information after they failed to file their statutory declarations as stipulated under the law. Additionally, three parliamentarians and one public official were discharged of liability by paying the fixed penalty and submitting the requested information after they failed to provide information under Section 431B of the Integrity Commission Act. Integrity Commission's processes related to Holness's statutory declarations nearing completion. The Integrity Commission, Jamaica's main anti corruption agency, said its processes involving income and assets declarations by Prime Minister Andrew Holness are nearing completion. The Commission's chairman, Justice Seymour Panton, gave the update in his remarks in the agency's annual report for 2023. 2024 that was tabled in the House of Representatives on Tuesday afternoon. Holness's declarations for 2021 have not been certified, which has affected subsequent submissions. The issue has been a major source of political controversy, especially with general elections just over a year away. Justice Panton acknowledged the public questions about the issue, saying much has been written and said over the non-certification of Holness's declarations. He noted that the Director of Information and the Complaints is required to examine the declarations and inform the Commission once he is satisfied that they are completed. It must be remembered that to satisfy himself of the due completion of a statutory declaration, the Director of Information and Complaints shall make such inquiries as he considers necessary. The inquiries are aimed at determining accuracy, he said, with a reference to the Integrity Commission Act. Panton added, given the restrictions imposed by the Act as regards statutory declarations generally and the matters related thereto, I may only say that the processes of the Commission are nearing completion in respect of the Prime Minister's declarations. In February, Holness confirmed that he was in the process of providing additional information sought by the Commission. In an interview on Nationwide Radio on Monday, Holness said he and the Commission have had further exchanges. They have written to me, I have written back to them. They have written to me, I have written back to them. And it is still a matter for the Integrity Commission. Like you, I too am anxious to have this matter resolved, he said. Holness didn't give specifics on the inquiries, but he said the Commission has been examining his personal finances going back several years. That takes time, because it is just not my response alone that they have to await. They have to await the responses of several other agencies. It's a very detailed process. Asked about the political implications for him, the Prime Minister said, I have followed the process as best as I can and I can only await the Integrity Commission. I am in an invidious position because I am the one that has to ensure that the law is respected and therefore you will never hear me make any complaint even if I feel it has been unfair and unduly so to me. The Integrity Commission is blocked by law from commenting on its investigations until a report is tabled in Parliament. Under the law, a summary of the certified declarations 
for the Prime Minister and the opposition leader are to be published. Those for opposition leader Mark Golden have been published. The status of the 2023 submissions is expected to be published later this year. Meanwhile, the Integrity Commission has disclosed that in September 2023, it embarked on an initiative to examine incomes and assets declared by all parliamentarians for December 2018 to December 2022. It said an assessment of declarations for 2023 will follow during this financial year, which ends in March 2025. The Commission said it has examined 68 percent, or 374, of the 549 of declarations parliamentarians as at December 31, 2023. Guys, thanks for watching. Please join us this afternoon at 2 p.m. for another news update.